teach you the basics of riffing and creating riffs and playing rock guitar. We're going to learn the pentatonic scale and we're going to learn a two note power chord and a three note power chord. Hey guys, uh, just a few things before we move on with the lesson. I'm going to provide you with some lesson notes to download. Um, the drum loop so you can practice on your own if you don't have a drum loop yourself and um, the, the chord progression that we're going to learn so that you can practice soloing over it okay one last note as I realize this after I recorded is this guitar is tuned down half a step so if you want to play along with me you're going to have to tune it down a step or just simply play everything I did one fret higher so if you, I played this note if you want to play along with me and get the same sound, you're going to have to play it simply one fret higher. So if I play something like this, you play it here. Okay, best of luck, and hopefully this is helpful. If you need anything else, write in the comments. Maybe I can make a video to clear it, clarify it. Good luck. Enjoy the lesson. Power chords are really simple. You can use any finger that you want, any arrangement. We'll take these two, open it up. Okay, and each finger is going to play on a different string that's right next to each other. And then you play them together, and then with this hand, you block the strings to give a muted sound, and then you play it. Okay, so that's our two note power chord. We can add three fingers, usually these two, the middle ones, are stuck together. We create the V again, and you get the root. And again, each finger goes on a separate string, and these ones are on the same fret. You see on the same number, in the same line, column. And this one is one apart. And then all you do is you take that power chord, and you start moving around the guitar neck. Just start making stuff up until you find something that sounds good. Memorize the one, the patterns that don't sound good. What is a pattern? You just memorize when you play a power chord. Memorize where you moved it and if the sound was good or not. All right, so you can keep a journal and write, memorize. You realize, oh, when I move it this way. I like the sound, okay, and that'll be your, your sounds. You don't need any music theory for this, just your ear. Now we want to add, create some sort of riffs, and we do that using scales. So for example, How do you so how do you riff how do you do, like improvise little things like that all you're doing is you memorize a pattern so a group of notes and those group of notes can be moved around anywhere you want so it can be moved around here or here and then you start fooling around and mix and rearranging the order of the note you don't always have to start with the first one. It could be. Okay. So you just, that's where the art aspect comes with it. So what is this pattern? It's pretty simple. Uh, so this is going to be the shape, okay? It'll be one note. That's your root. Can you see the power chord? The power chord is going to be locked in to the shape. We're going to use the power chord as the reference to the scale. So we're going to start with the first note from the power chord, and then we're going to skip the first two notes, and then play the third one. So, power chord, and then we're play the power chord again. Okay, 
Now let's move on to the next string. So we got two notes on this string. And we're just skipping one fret. And then we move down to the next string and do the same thing. So, power chord. Alright, again. play the pattern backwards. I can move over here and play the same pattern. I'm still using the same shape. Skipping two notes, skipping two notes, skipping one note, and then play the power chord. Now some tricks to start to make it sound more musical is just to add hammer-ons and pull off and then combine them together. You can add a little bends on the string or vibrato and shake it and then just put it together. I did, I did a hammer on. You can try hammer on playing the whole scale with hammer ons. Or pull offs. And then you just play different notes in the scale. Mixing in the hammer on and pull offs. And then all you gotta do is find some chord progressions you like, add some drums to it, and just record your riffs and then you're on your way to start writing your first song. That was just using the tools that I showed you. I just played power chords. And then I just drift on the pentatonic scale. Just add, make sure you add bends and hammer ons and pull offs. Okay, rock on. I'll play a drum beat for you. And it's your turn to try soloing, okay? An easy way to get started is just to have the drum track going and play palm muted. Just the open string. And just find a random power chord and see how it sounds. And then move it somewhere else. Back to open string. Play with different rhythms. Be creative. Go back to the palm. Okay. Let's play, let's try playing now. The power chords on a new set of strings, but we're gonna keep playing the bass note. 
stop playing the bass note, E, and find the riff. So, so how do you know which pentatonic scale to play? We're gonna pick the bass note, right? So find where is that same note E? It'll be on the seventh fret here. And then what's the scale again? Pentatonic scale, remember? It's one, three, one, two. So one, three, one, two, one, two. some tools we learn how to move around our power chords okay we learn to find the root so the root is basically the, the one chord that you're gonna keep returning to the strongest chord you find in your sequence if this happens to be my root then we just play our pentatonic scale from here it's always the same pattern okay we learn just the most basic version obviously there's a different version we're not there yet we're just sticking to the basics we're just learning the first first half okay and we learn how to riff on that then you add a drum track and you can also learn how to be your own bass player by playing just with the top string and with the lower strings you're playing your chord sequences and that's about it. And then you can just record, if you want to, you can record your parts separately. For example, I'll play two power chords. And then you can riff on as a second layer on top, for example. Let me record this sequence for you. What, what is happening? The two chords I'm playing? And I just move down the power chord and do the same thing. Okay, so what is my root note? It's this one. This is my pentatonic scale. Okay, let it play. Got it? 
So this time it was different. We recorded a loop of the power chords, and then I used a, I used a pentatonic scale to play over the chords based off the root note. Uh, just to be safe, how do I know which chords will go good together? You can use your ear and see what sounds good, or use the pattern from the pentatonic scale and just use those notes in the chords. So I use the first and the third note of the pentatonic scale for this guitar progression. Right? This is first, second, third. So I use the first and the third to create this chord progression. Good. And then when I was soloing, I went up a neck, an octave, or a few octaves, over here, and this is the same note as over here. Okay? Okay? But then I started using a blues scale when I was playing over it. And the blues scale is almost the same thing as a pentatonic scale. So we had this, this, but we're gonna add one, we're gonna add three notes on the on these strings, so it'll be like this. One, you skip two, same thing as the pentatonic, but we're gonna add one more note. Like that. And everything else is the same. Okay. Took it, I took it next level and I played the full scale. So so far with the pentatonic, I only showed you I only showed you half, half the scale. The, rem, the remaining of the scale will be like this. So maybe I'll just post a link in the bio of what it looks like. I'll show one more time the second half. The first half we already know by now. We're gonna walk down the pattern the same as before. And now the bottom two strings are the same pattern that we started with the top string. So there's only two patterns. There's the pattern where there's two notes in between, and there's another pattern where there's only one note in between. So we can call this pattern one, and this is pattern two. So look. Pattern one, then it's pattern two. Okay, on the last two strings here, it would go back to pattern one. See, because there's two notes gap. Okay, and then you can learn the blue scale on your own. One extra note. And then once again, we'll put everything together. Alright, so let me find the scale that we use. playing one note in the scale. Try playing just on two strings and see what you can come up with. Move up the 
again. And then combine everything together. So that's what I recommend when you're learning how to improvise. Maybe just pick only two strings, or maybe start with one. Come up with your melodies, and then when you're ready, add the second string, and then play around with the pattern. See, visualize the pattern. Then you add the next strings. And then you try four strings. Or three, and then four. I start adding hammer-ons and pull-off and vibrato and bends. Okay. Hope that helps. Good luck. And I'll finish up with the jam.